friends, thanks for going a little bit deeper with me as we look at some of the major themes behind my new book, Made Well. In the first segment, we talked about Abigail and, um, and that she was a woman who wasted no time and what it looks like for you and I to be people who waste no time, who show up in the midst of other people's suffering and their darkest moments and, um, and be the hands and feet of Jesus right away. Um, what I want to talk about in this segment is really the heartbeat of the book for me, and it's it's the fact that healing happens in all the ways I don't want it to. Um, I, I very clearly say from the beginning of this book that I'm not qualified to write a book about some sort of great, big, grand miracle. Um, I wish that these big, flashy, amazing miracles that I pray for happen, but the truth is a lot of what I've seen in my own life and a lot of what I've seen in ministry as I've heard your stories and I've traveled the country um, are people that are, that are looking at their life saying, you know what, I prayed for God to step in and fix this in this way and it didn't happen and now what? And I think what we find in the gospel is a God who is very, very faithful to his people. He's always showing up. He's always present. He's always making himself known. God is actually in the business of healing all the time. It just doesn't always happen in the ways that you and I pray for or think that it should happen. Our ideas of healing, they're, they're one dimensional, you know? And so when, when I hear the question, do you wanna be made well? I say, yes, Jesus, let the babies live. I say, yes, Jesus, fix the cancer, cure it, make it go away, restore the marriage. Um, what I want from God is a God that has one big giant eraser and he just erases all the bad things and fixes it. What I'm learning instead in my journey is that God is at work healing me and fixing me and making me whole and drawing me to himself whether the cure comes or not, whether that great big flashy miracle ever happens or not, he's in the business of healing us and making us well in completely other ways. I love the story of Naaman, who is um, a really important guy in the military. You find his story, if you've got your Bible, you can turn to 2 Kings chapter 5. We find a story there. So Naaman's a general in the military, and he's just won all these really big battles, and, and so he's very well respected, and he's fearless on the battlefield. And, and really, there's nothing that can be found wrong with him except that he's a man that suffers from leprosy. And if we know anything about the Bible, we know that throughout history, leprosy is one of the most hated conditions and diseases. Your skin begins to eat itself, your toenails fall off, your fingernails fall off. You are unclean. And um, in most of the stories we read about lepers in the Bible, they're, they're literally sent out of the city to live in a trash heap. They can't be touched. Um, you don't want to look at a leper. You don't want to be breathed on by a leper. You want to be as far away as possible. Naaman's wife is served by an Israelite slave girl. And for whatever reason, this slave girl finds compassion in her heart for her captor. And she says to the wife, there is a man, there is a prophet that can heal your husband. His name is Elisha. And if, if Naaman will go to him, he can help him be healed. And so what does Naaman do? He actually goes and he seeks out this Israelite prophet. And he shows up like in true general fashion, right? He's got chariots and horses, and I'm sure he's got like security guard and all this stuff surrounding him. He comes to the house of Elisha the prophet, and he sends a servant to go tell him, we're here, we've arrived. And I love this, Elisha doesn't even come to the door. So get this, verse nine. So Naaman went with his horses, his chariots, he stopped at the door of Elisha's house, and Elisha sent a messenger to say to him, go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will be restored and you will be cleansed. Elisha doesn't even come to the door. He sends a messenger to greet this man, this dignitary, this man who runs the armies, and he doesn't even get up himself and come greet him. He sends a servant, and the servant says to him, Elisha says, go down to that river over there, that muddy, nasty river, wash your body in it seven times, and you're going to be well. So check out Naaman's response. Verse 11, but Naaman went away angry and said, 
I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the spot and cure me of my leprosy. Naaman is so angry that he is not being healed the way that he thinks he should be healed. I'm a lot like Naaman. I don't know if you are, but I ask God to heal things and fix things, and I expect him to show up and wave his wand over the spot I'm standing and the Lord, my God, to just poof, make it all better. But the truth is, a lot of our healing happens in ways that we don't expect. Naaman never expected to arrive at the house of Elisha and be told to go to a dirty, muddy river and wash his body. This is what Naaman's servant says in verse 13. Naaman's servant went to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more then when he tells you, wash and be cleansed? So Naaman went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times, as the man of God had told him, and his flesh was restored, and he became clean like that of a young boy. And this has always been the case. Emmanuel has come and he has shown up in our midst in ways that we never expected, performing miracles and offering salvation and teaching about the kingdom of heaven in ways that you and I can't even comprehend. Healing happens all the time, but a lot of times you and I miss it because while we're begging God and demanding that he fix things and wave his wand just like Naaman was wanting, God's quietly at work, working out our healing, working out our restoration, working out redemption in the most odd and backwards and upside down and countercultural ways um, that we can think of. It's not what we think of when we ask for a miracle. And in the stories and the books, I talk about how after a year of death in my life, where I watched my grandparents die and watched my nieces die and everything was breaking at the seams, the things that I prayed for, the big flashy miracles didn't happen. What happened instead were these tiny moments, wave after wave after wave, where healing was happening It just wasn't happening in the ways that I was praying for. I wonder today, how are you hoping that God shows up and divinely changes your situation? It's not a bad thing for you and I to believe and to have faith and to pray for God's miracles. But we don't want to become so fixated on one form of healing that we miss the fact that God's hand is at work in our hearts and in our lives, healing us in tiny way after tiny way. I love the verse in John 10, 10, where Jesus is talking to the people and he says, the thief has come to steal, kill, and destroy. He doesn't give himself credit for stealing and killing and destroying. He says, the thief has come to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come to give you life and to give it abundantly. And when I read this, what I think that means is that in the midst of this broken world where there is a thief who is very much set loose and is intent on killing and stealing and destroying, that you and I will face cancer and divorce and heartache and loss of finances and ruptured relationships and death. But it's in the midst of that, even though those things don't go away, even though those things are very much our reality. In the midst of that, Jesus says, even though he is here to still kill and destroy, I am at work and I am here to bring life and bring it abundantly. Abundant life, we have this idea of what it is and what it should look like. It looks a lot like Naaman sometimes that we would be just magically fixed and cured and sometimes that's how God works. Sometimes we see the miracle. Sometimes we have celebrations and we honor this God who steps in and does what only God can do. And sometimes the miracle comes in tiny, small ways that we never expected or thought to pray for.